Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at a few assorted chords and just in case you're wondering there's no connection between the 10 chords that I've put on the board they're just 10 separate events if you like um, but people being in touch with us saying well I just kind of use the basic chords like C, F and G but how can I make it a bit more interesting? And people are asking, what do we mean by these things called extended chords? So some of these chords that I've got on the board are plain diatonic chords. In other words, they're just the basic chords that we find in each key. So if I'm in the key of C, here's a scale of C, and I can make a diatonic chord simply by adding the third and the fifth note above each note of the scale. So that gives me what we call in Roman numerals called one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, before I come back to one. Or you might know this as a chord of C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, B diminished. Because in any major key, the first, the fourth, and the fifth chords are major, the second, the third, and the sixth chords are minor, and the seventh chord is diminished. So there are different ways of describing these chords, but they're what we call the basic diatonic chords. So you could take any major key, any minor key, just play the scale, put the third and the fifth note above each of those notes, and you've got your basic diatonic chords. And of course, then you can extend chords if you want to. So if I start with that chord one, that C chord, C, E, G, I can extend it by adding a seventh on the top of it. So there's a C major seven chord, or a one seven chord if you're in Roman numerals. I can put D on the top of it, and it becomes a ninth. I can put F on the top of it, it becomes an eleventh. I can put A on the top of it, it becomes a thirteenth. And by the time you get to 15, you're back where you started, so we don't bother extending beyond thirteenths. So if you want to use the basic diatonic chords, that's great, they work perfectly well. If you want it to be a little bit richer than that, well then you can start using these extended chords. So we've got a mixture of basic diatonic chords and extended chords, and let's see if we can work out what they are. So have a look at the first chord, see if you can work out what the notes are, and therefore what you think the chord might be. So we've got a C, a G, an E, and a B on the top. So whenever you get an assortment of notes, the thing is to try and reduce it to what its basic format is. Well, I've got C, and I've got E, which is the third above C. I've got G, which is the fifth above C. So that's my basic uh, diatonic chord, isn't it? A chord of C, or you could say it's called one in C major. What have I added to that? There's a B on the top of it, which is a seventh. So do you see why this is a C major seven chord? If you're in the key of C major, you could call it a one seven chord, whichever way you do it. And then all we do is distribute those notes across the texture. So in this case, I've got the C at the bottom, the E's in the alto part, the G's on the tenor part, and the B's at the top. Now you could experiment with space in that chord in different ways. You know, there's lots of different formations that it could come in and the quality of that will change, although the notes are essentially the same. But that's the chord. It's a C major seven. Let's have a look at chord number two. Well, what have I got this time? I've got F, C, A flat, F. Well, can we organize that into a basic triad, well I've got F, a third above F, A flat, a fifth above F is C, and there's F again. So what have I got here? I've just got a basic triad that this amounts to, so it is a basic diatonic chord, and this one is a chord of F minor. If it was A natural, it would be an F major chord, but because it's A flat, it's an F minor chord. So if that third is a major third above the bottom of the chord, and you've got a perfect fifth, it's a major chord. If the third is minor, and you've got a perfect fifth, it's a minor chord. If the third is minor and the fifth is diminished, it's a diminished chord. If the third is major and the fifth is augmented, it's an augmented chord. So that's the kind of recipe for how that works.
So there's an F minor chord. Number three, what have we got going on here? Something a bit intriguing. A G, an F, a B, and an E. Well, if you've got four different notes, chances are you might well be dealing with an extended chord because when you have a triad, you've only got three notes, and if you're writing in four parts, one of these notes will come twice. We had F at the bottom and F at the top there. We've got four different notes, so it may well be some kind of extended chord. Can we get this organized into a basic triad? Little bit harder than it seems, but we've got this G, haven't we? So if G is the bottom of our basic triad, well, B is a third above it, so that's useful. Can we see D a fifth above it? Well, we can't actually, but maybe we could just think about, well, maybe D's not actually sounding this chord. We have got F, haven't we? So that's the seventh. If we carry on, A is the ninth. C is the 11th, E is the 13th. So what have we got here? We've got G and B, the root and the third of the basic triad. We've got a seventh in the tenor here, and we've got a 13th at the top. So this is a G13, or if you were in the key of C major, you could call it a five in Roman numerals with a 13. All right, and when you have a, a 13th chord in four part harmony, well, you might not want all these notes all playing in the chord because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gives us a seven part chord and it gets a bit congested. So what we tend to do, if we want to write it in four parts, we have a root, a third, a seventh, and a 13th. So there's your 13th chord. Chord number four, what's going on here? D, C, F, E. So they're all different notes, so it could be some kind of extended chord. Can we find the basic triad? Well, we've got D. F is a third above it. Oh, we don't seem to have A, which would be the fifth above that. But we have got C, which is the seventh, and we have got E, which is the ninth. So it's looking like a D minor ninth chord, okay? Lovely chord, isn't it? Some of these chords are beautiful when you hear them, so it's worth experimenting with extended chords. So again, if we have a ninth chord, we'd have one, two, three, four, five notes. So is there a note we can miss out if we're wanting four parts? And there is. If you're writing a ninth chord, we, we normally miss out the fifth when we're looking for a four part arrangement of it. So I've got a root, I've got a third, I've got a seventh, and then I've got the ninth. So there's a D, minor nine. Why is it minor? Because D to the third is a minor third. So that's heading me in the direction of a minor chord. So a D minor nine. Great chords. Chord number five, what have I got here? A, C sharp, A, E. So I've only got three different notes, haven't I? I've got A, C sharp, E. So that's looking like a basic chord, isn't it? A basic diatonic chord. A to C sharp is a major third and A to E is a perfect fifth, so it's just a major chord. So A is the root of that, it's a chord of A major. Number six, what have I got here? I've got B, F sharp, D sharp, B. Mm, looks like three notes, so it could be a basic chord, basic diatonic triad. The B comes twice, so that could well be the root of it. it doesn't have to be, but it could be. A third above B is D something, a fifth above it is F something. Okay, so B. D sharp, that's going up a major third. F sharp is a perfect fifth above the B, so that's the recipe for a major chord. B's at the bottom of it. This is a chord of B major. Okay, onwards to number seven. Now, what have I got this time? D, C, F sharp, E, four different notes, possibly an extended chord. What could be at the bottom of that one? Well, we've got D here, haven't we? We've got F sharp. So that's a third above it. I can't see A, I can't see a fifth. But I can see a seventh, and I can see a ninth. So it's looking like another one of these ninth chords. And do you remember earlier on when we met a ninth chord, we said if you need to miss out a note, you can miss out the fifth. That's what's happened here. We've got a root, a third, missed out the fifth, a seventh, and a ninth. Okay, now, you might be looking at this one, number seven, and comparing it with number four. When we had number four, we had that with an F natural, and we've got number seven. We've got this with an F sharp. So what's the difference? We said that was a D minor nine. Well, 
This is looking more like a major chord, isn't it? Because we've got D, F sharp, we would have A if it was the fifth, and then we've got the seventh and the ninth. So there we are. So it's a D9, okay? But it's a, a basic chord is major rather than minor back here. Number eight, what have we got here? Four different notes, A, G, E, C, so possibly an extended chord. What's it looking like if I've got A in the bass? A third above it is C, fifth above it is E, seventh above it is G. So that's more obvious, isn't it? That's an extended chord and it's a seventh. What's the basic triad? A to C, that's a minor third. And then A to E is a perfect fifth. So it's a minor chord, the recipe for a minor chord. And we've added a seventh. So lovely, nice chord. Oh, that's juicy, isn't it? So there's an A minor seven chord. Okay, what have we got going on in the next chord? Well, I've got B flat. I've got B flat again up there. And I've got F and I meant to write a D there. So apologies for that extra line that we don't actually need. Let's get shot of that. And then we're actually looking at the right note. So I've got a basic triad going on here, haven't I? Which is B flat, two of them, D and F. Above the B flat, the D is a major third and the F is a perfect fifth. So it's a major chord, so it's B flat major straightforward diatonic chord. Number 10, mm, interesting one. G, F, B, A flat, what's going on here for goodness sake? Well, let's see what we've got. We've got G, we've got B, which is the third above it. I can't see D anywhere, but remember we sometimes miss out the fifth, don't we? I can see F, so that's the seventh, and A flat looks like some kind of ninth. Okay, we might be puzzling about the A flat, but it's certainly a ninth. So this is a G9 chord, but the ninth is a minor ninth. Okay, so if we had it as a major ninth, it would be that, but now we've got it as a minor ninth, which is even more colorful, isn't it? And so what have we done? To get it into four parts, we've missed out the fifth, but we've got a root, a third, a seventh, and this time a minor ninth. So you can have a straight nine with a major, or you can make it a minor ninth. Okay, that gives you a bit more colour there. So, little exercise in kind of can we describe chords? Can we look at notes on the page and work out what the chord might be? Either way, it's going to get us a bit more inventive with the way that we use basic diatonic chords and extended chords.